You're listening to Random Fit with hosts Wendy Batts and Ken Miller, winner of a Gold Markham Award for Digital Media. Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome to this episode of Random Fit, where I myself, Ken Miller, and my partner in crime, Wendy Batts. Wendy, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you, Ken? I'm good. I'm good. And uh, this episode, we are going to talk about wellness coaching, but wellness coaching from the standpoint of wellness coaching versus personal training, and not versus like they're going head to head against each other, but just to talk about coaching and personal training. Because when we talk about personal training, Wendy, what is it that you, what what comes to mind when you talk about personal training? Well, I think the important part of that is actually the personal part of that. Um, but being able to, you know, learn a lot about someone, how they move, how they feel, what their goals are. And then I try to find a solution on how I can help them throughout their their journey. But, you know, it is more and when you're thinking of personal training, it is more with working with weights and working in a, with equipment and trying to get them stronger to live a healthier life. So there is that component of it. But I think when we do talk about the differences, they really complement each other because yeah. I think wellness coaching does a lot with personal training and personal training does a lot with wellness coaching. And so I think kind of really defining the differences yeah. uh, is important. And it's huge because when you talk, I mean, I'm sure when you tell people what you do or even where you go to work physically, like when I say I have a, training studio the first thing that people ask is what kind of training do you do right yeah, is it, yeah well because then you think well i have a performance or a personal training studio thing oh so you work with people trying to lose weight right so we often time as personal trainers we get categorized into that one little genre of okay you're there to make people look different than how they look now whether it's to put on muscle or lose a little bit of fat or the combination of both, which is usually what we're trying to get them to do. But when it comes to personal training, like you're saying, Wendy, we have to get to know them. We have to figure out where they've been, where they want to go, where are they today so that we can construct or co-create, I like to say, uh, a, a physical movement plan, whether it's on a rower or a skill mill or dumbbells or barbells or body weight training. So when it comes to personal training, that's where we get pigeonholed into. But when we talk about wellness coaching, especially now, Wendy, you know, post shutdown, post pandemic, that now these health issues are coming to light when we we're talking about people's um, body composition, how well can we endure sickness and how well are we as a society. So when we discuss the idea of wellness coaching, you know, a lot of that is within the realm of what we do as personal trainers, if we're really trying to get to know people, like you said, Wendy, but wellness coaching does have a different connotation when you look at it as a, a as a career path, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. And I think I think it's important exactly what you said, we get pigeonholed. And I know often people will say, well, what do you do? And again, I do have a lot of jobs. So I'm like, yeah. well, in, in which, you know, which area are we talking about today? But when I tell people that I'm a personal trainer, I'm very proud of that because I have seen people reach goals that they never thought were possible. But people are like, oh, you're just a personal trainer. You just lift, you know, you teach someone how to lift weights and it's so much more. And so, you know, for the fitness enthusiasts that are out there, just realize there's a lot of education, there's a lot of planning, and there's a lot of things that we can do to really help someone achieve multiple goals that, you know, of, and being able to provide some nutrition guidance. Again, we're not RD, so we're not writing programs, but helping someone with that, looking at someone's assessment, how are they coming in versus, you know, how should they be in comparison to like ideal movement and form and how do they walk? How are they sitting? How do they sleep? All of those questions are something that we gather up front, not just to build rapport, but really to have that blueprint. So if somebody's coming in and they have low back, you know, pain, or they're saying, oh, you know, I've sprained this ankle three different times. You're like, well, why did this happen? And then we're able to create this, this, this guide, you know, and this process to help them on their journey of feeling better. So they move better, feel better and perform better. 
And I think it's important too, because when you think about wellness coaching, and I do say they complement each other, you know, we, through NASM, we do have, you know, a specialization that teaches wellness coaching and that, that helps them. And the differences between the two, when you're really defining that, wellness coaches are able to help someone with their fitness journey, with their wellness journey. And so when we define wellness, what does that mean? If you look at all these definitions, they're really not ever the same, but I think it's important to say that if you're looking at someone's complete mental health, their physical health, their social health, what they're doing daily, and then finding out to where are the parts that they feel like they can grow and get better? Where do they feel? Meaning you're, you're speaking with someone and learning a lot about th that one individual. You're able to guide them on this journey. And, you know, wellness is a journey. That's important. It's not a destination. There's no end point. It's a constant revolving change. And I think the coaches help with that, that change. Personal trainers can help with that change as well, but we also guide them into other physical components. Right. And I think you, you bring up a great point when you talk about the physical, right, which is what we do as personal trainers. But from the wellness side, there is the physical because it is a means to manage what you, you brought up with stress. Right. So we have to take that 360 degree view of, OK, what's going on with somebody's life? So when we talk about wellness. It's so much more than just, all right, you know, you had a bad day. Why don't you go walk it off? Go out there, get some fresh air and and move a little bit or why don't you go pick up something heavy and let that stress out well when we're looking at wellness we have to look at okay let's look at let's look at stress you can't just move your way out of stress as you know when you right so you and i I'm, how often have we had those days where like oh man i just oh i don't know how I'm, i got four more hours to get through before you know before i pick up my kids right and that that's stressful because then i get now i got to figure out what to cook for dinner and then yeah. <laughs> we're, oh you we're sound gonna, like you're you're living my brain right now i'm like, know, oh, that's like all the things that yeah, i have to we, do oh <laughs> the, the the baseball game was rained out so now we got to reschedule it for another day where he's got two other days you know now it's not you know not so much about my kid and their sports but now it's like i gotta get in the car i gotta <laughs> okay what am i gonna feed them so that can be a stressor too so when we have to look at when we look at wellness yeah stress you know you know, when do you come down off of that high of, okay, we're in it, we're in the mix, we're, we're going at it and we're running here and there. And you, next thing you know, it's 10 o'clock at night, but looking at, okay, well, where are those micro moments within the day where we can, okay, take five deep breaths, nice four second in, hold for four seconds, four second out. So we're talking about a little a sense of box breathing, right? Four second in, hold for four, exhale for four, hold that for four, and then repeat that four, 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 four tempo yeah. just to kind of be in the moment, settle yourself down, and then and then you can go on to the next thing. But it's when we're the the heart rate is high, the stress is high, and the next thing you know, it's 10 o'clock at night, and then you come down versus you're up, then you can kind of bring yourself down, you're up. Bring yourself down. And I'm just talking about just a just a, an example of okay. Well, how are we managing stress? We can't just exercise stress away, right? Because now you're imposing mental stress on top of physical stress, and then back to the mental stress again. But when it comes to wellness, we need to look at okay. Well, how are we managing stress? Uh, are we implementing breathing techniques, meditation? Just again to discuss a little bit about the mental side of what it takes to look at okay well how are we managing someone's wellness because your heart rate your hrv which we've talked about before in another podcast blood pressure all those things are going to be a reflection of how your day goes and when it comes to you know looking at who the person is in total we need to look at yeah okay there's what you do day to day that's what you have to do to survive that's what you have to do to live but how are you going to take care of yourself so that you can do that day after day after day? Well, and I think too, you know, as personal trainers, when somebody hires a personal trainer, they're like, okay, here's 30 minutes, 45 minutes, maybe an hour, depends on how you're running your sessions. But, you know, my clients come in and they're expecting to work out. And so I feel like sometimes we are missing a lot of those components. And, and I think that's the beauty of having a wellness coach to um, combine maybe with a personal trainer or maybe you know, do a 30 minute workout with your personal trainer. But if they're also certified in wellness coaching and you feel confident sharing, you know, some personal details, 
that can actually really build a business um, if you are somebody that's looking to kind of do that combination. Because to your point, you know, when you think about wellness in general, like you said, we've got the mental side. So when you get stressed out, are you doing breathing techniques? Why are you getting stressed out? What does your calendar look like? How much time are you taking for yourself? But then remember, with 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 wellness in general, we're also looking at the social component. So how do you handle yourself? You know, if you are a, a business person and you have happy hours that you do as a as a company, are you going and just drinking and, you know, relieving stress that way? That might not be the right solution. So how do you interact in that type of situation? Because if it's a happy hour you need to be at, how are you going to change what you're doing? And so I think that's the important part is really looking at someone's life, you know, as a whole and where are their stressors? Where can they put time in for themselves? And then with, you know, with coaching, again, the physical part, that training component is very important because if somebody can't move well, they're in a lot of pain, then they feel awful. They don't want to do anything. Then they, they become more of a hermit because every time they go out and they do things, they hurt. So it's like, you know, you want to think of, of it as all combined. And then if you can actually, look at finding a wellness coach. And again, wellness coaching, they're there to, to offer support. They are offering different types. Of, there's three different types of empathy. So, you know, you've got cognitive, emotional, as well as compassionate. My job as a wellness coach isn't to say it's okay that you canceled your personal training appointment because you needed to go home and cook dinner. I want to say, why did you have that happen? I want to find solutions to help someone not cancel appointments that they that they're putting in for themselves. I fall victim to this. I have today's my, my little man's birthday. So, so again, I'm looking at what I can do for him. And sometimes I put myself on the back burner and that's what we are trying to change someone's mental and cognitive way of thinking. It's okay to put yourself first. You're not being selfish because if you're not healthy, how are you going to help your family? And, you know, it, it really is important to make that in your, in your schedule and make yourself a priority. And, and I don't do that very well at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you can't take care of number one, you can't take care of number two, right? So if there's no me, <laughs> there's no you, right? There's, the, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not doing myself any favors and I'm not giving you as my number two, right? As the other person in my life, I'm not doing you any favors either. Cause I'm only giving you part of me. If I can't manage myself physically, mentally, because again, I could be as, you know, I could have 10% body fat, but what is that if I'm stressed out and in a bad mood all day, because I don't know how to manage myself. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So when, when Neil told me that, it's like, you can't take care of number one, you can't take care of number two. I just sat there. It's like, like, I think my my mouth was open and I'm I'm just looking up and I'm like. Well, I think it's because you're probably thinking of a movie back in the day, maybe <laughs> where uh, you know <laughs> we, we won't even go into that. But yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, but it, it is a, it is a balance, right? Because you know, here's the thing: you want to go out and you want to have you want to be with friends and you want to enjoy. Yeah, maybe there's some libation. Maybe there's going to be consumption of you know something deep fried. Right. Which we all know from a from a body composition standpoint, it's not the best thing. But what does it do for you to be amongst your peers, your friends, people that you're going to have a good laugh with all the endorphins and the dopamine and all that good stuff that flows when you're in a good mood, when you're in a good environment and you have to make these choices. So, you know what, if, if there is a beverage, right that I want to partake in that, you know, helps me relax a little bit. But as long as I don't consume too much or too late, you know, if we're talking about wellness right here, because alcohol too much or too late in the evening or even heavy foods, a lot of calories too much or too late is going to affect your sleep. Now, if I'm looking for good quality sleep, I want to get that deep REM um, cycle going and I have a 8 a.m. workout that I have planned. I want to be able to commit to that. So have your beverage, have your food, have your laughs, joke around, but consider your sleep. And then so that when you do look at your workout the next day, you know, you can do that with, you know, as intense as you want. But that's, I think, what 
where wellness coaching does have a strong interplay when it comes to personal training, because now we, it's not just the exercise, not just how many sets, reps, exercises that you have set for that workout, which is what we would categorize a personal trainer, but it's looking at, okay, let's look at the psycho social aspect of it, balance out what we have to do for ourselves to feel good, you know, be out and about and, and do what it takes to, to get, you know, to, to hit as many different points that make you feel good or actually get you to normal as a human being. And then we can look at physical movement as a component that fix along those things. So as a wellness coach, if I'm, if I, if I say to you, Wendy, Hey, what do you have planned for tonight? Well, it's my friend's birthday. You know, it's a, it's a, you know, it's her 40th. It's so it's a big one for her. So we're going to go out. So, so what are you going to do? Right. So what are you going to do when you go out? Right. So then that's okay. Well, have your drink, have your beverages, have your food. Don't eat too much. Don't drink too much either. Try to get home decent hour. Maybe you need to move your workout time a little bit later. So th that's, those are the things that as a wellness coach or having those wellness coaching characteristics, you know, that's how that guides the conversation. I think it's, I mean, and that's really important. And, and, you know, there are different types of coaching and different types of training that's out there. And so I think that's sometimes where we, you know, as a society get really confused. Like I, I really want to hit these goals. I want to feel better. I want to, you know, live a healthier life, but I don't know where to start. And mm -hmm. I, I get that question all the time. Like I'm coming to you because I need help. However, you know, this is what I'm looking for. And that's why I said a lot of times it's really combining the two, because to your point, Ken, somebody wants to go out and have a good time. I want them to go out and have a good time. We're not here to shut someone's, you know, fun time out of their life, but it's like, how can we make better decisions? How can we make better choices? You know, if they have a buffet table, don't stand by the buffet table, go sit at, you know, at a table in the back. If you, you know, need to grab a plate of food, grab something, you know, that's very colorful. I mean, little things like that have soup beforehand because soup will fill you up and then you can have the main course, have a salad, you know, drink water in between drinks. All of those things are what you're going to hear more for wellness coaching. And then, you know, again, with personal trainers, we're looking at your body comp, your, you know, where you're starting, where you're finishing. We're doing reassessments on movement patterning. But there's also another type of coaching out there. It's called health coaching and health coaching is different from wellness coaching. And so just as a just to define it is you know, you're looking at, at someone that can maybe work with a physician and this physician gave them a script. And so they're looking at a medically diagnosed issue that someone needs help with. And they usually have different types of training. So more clinical type training. And I think that's really important too, because if this, if you fall within that category, maybe look at, at finding a health coach. If you don't have any kind of medical diagnosis and you really want generalization, go more wellness coaching. And then, of course, if you need, you know, body, you want to move better, you're going to look into personal training. And um, and I know someone that actually has all three. And why? It's because that's what keeps them on track. They talk to different people. There's different things that are clicking. And and it really has worked very well for that particular individual. And, and I have seen multiple changes of who they were when I first met them to a year later, who they are now. And right. it's, it's awesome to see their family sees it. You know, again, this is a mother who um, really just struggled with a lot of things. And, and a lot of it was mental and emotional. And that's why the health coach comes in, because there is medication and diagnosis that they're dealing with on that side. But then the other lifestyle changes that wellness coach has, has worked wonders. And then I know what that wellness coach is doing, because, again, I have a rapport with their, you know, their kind of circle of people. And I can actually piggyback that while I'm putting her through a workout. Right. And it's and it's it is about completing the picture. Um, so when you're dealing with, as, as you said, Wendy, when if you have a specific need, if you have a specific goal that requires a specific background, right? Somebody who's qualified, they know what questions to ask, right? Just as us personal trainers, we want to know about health history, medical history, body composition, if you will. Uh, wellness coach, they, they have a good comprehensive idea of how you spend your weeks. But when it comes to health coaching now, now you have to understand, and you don't have to know everything because even medical professionals, they have to go to the back room and, you know, flip through their book and figure out, okay, well, what does this mean? What does this do? What's the contraindications? Uh, uh, you know, for this person. But, you know, when we're talking about the the health coach, as you say, the 
the idea here is that they know what questions to ask. And if they don't know an answer, right, they know the resources that they have available to find the answer. Because, I mean, nobody has that, you know, level of, of, of comprehension and, and memory. And I mean, if you have a good, you know, catalog of clients, right? If you have a good, healthy client base, that's a lot to remember. And you don't want to forget the little things because if you're talking about, uh, you know, specific needs of an individual, especially when it comes to, you know, health, uh, you know, health situations, you don't want to, you don't want to leave any stone unturned. So, mm -hmm. So far, Wendy, this this talk about wellness coaching and personal training here on Random Fit between, you know, you, Wendy Batts and myself, Ken Miller, we are talking about the difference of wellness coaching and having that understanding of someone's total well-being versus that personal training side of things where we are there just to guide them. Well, not just to guide them in, in movement, <laughs> but we kind of complete the picture and understanding who you are, what you need to be a whole and complete person. Mm -hmm. And and I think, you know, that's that's so overall important because, you know, we just said it earlier. Wellness is a journey. There's never a finish line. Marty says that, too. You know, like, you know, basically working out, there's there's no finish line. It's like, what are you trying to get out of your life and what 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 components and areas do you do you feel like you're lacking support in? And again, with the health coaching, I mean, they usually have a treatment plan that was prescribed by a physician. And so that may not be you. That's not me. But working with some health coaches, I mean, you know, listening to there's two different um, podcasts that are through NASM. So if you guys are really interested in learning more about wellness coaching and really just just wellness in general, um, I know Angie Miller, uh, she has strong mind, strong body. She is a licensed clinical mental health um, specialist, and she also is a wellness coach. And then we have um, Darlene as well. Um, and Darlene is one of our wellness coaches and she has a podcast called Better Than Fine. And I think both of those together, they complement one another. They, they say a lot of the same things, but in different ways. And, you know, I know, Ken, when you and I have a struggle, we can reach out to, the, to our, again, our professional network and say, hey, I've got this situation going on. What do you suggest? And I think it's really important too. just, you know, if you're in this personal training realm and you feel like you're stuck, I think getting you know more involved in wellness coaching and putting that into your your client's plan. Um, you can actually have a wellness coaching session on one day. You can do personal training on another day, and then do wellness coaching follow ups. And it's it's really I think a way to really build your business. And I think it's important to include that if you're not already. Yeah, and getting that background uh, only completes your understanding of what I mean. Learning, studying the information only completes what you know you as a, even if you're a personal trainer having a certified wellness coaching background only kind of gives you a different insight on how you can truly help somebody and you know like you said uh, both Angie and Darlene great resources if you're looking at something else to add on to your podcast library again this this wasn't intended to be a plug <laughs> for other platforms within the National Academy of Sports Medicine podcast network but when you and I, Wendy, when we need information on this side of helping people, that's a resource we go to. I know I've reached out to, you know, Angie and I will we'll talk every now and then, but she's, she gives me some really good insight that is a reflection. It's like, I'll listen to her podcast. Like, oh yeah, that's what, that's what <laughs> Angie told me the other day. Uh, but I thought, uh, you know, I, I think that when it comes to wellness coaching versus personal training and I'd say, and personal training. If you're there to help somebody get better, you know, I think we need to understand these two two backgrounds because they they're not they're not totally separate, but they are a little bit different. But I think if you're looking for some help and you figure I, I've got my exercise down, but there's other things that I need to accomplish, or as far as achieving things as as far as stress reduction, addressing sleep and things like that, then you know, looking up somebody with a certified wellness coaching background is, you know, is an option now, you know, especially because it's coaching that can be done on the phone call or it could, you know, or zoom or whatever, but it could also be done in person, but you have a lot of options because it's not like you need a personal trainer, you know, when you need a personal trainer to pick up the weights, assist you, <laughs> spot you, if you will, but a coaching, you know, they, they're just there to guide you and that can take place as, as simple as a, as a conversation. 
And that conversation though, that can also find out where your triggers are. And I think that's important too, because I know there's certain things where I'm like, oh, you know what? I just want to eat that chocolate because it's late. I'm watching, <laughs> you know, this show. Um, I finally have five minutes to myself and that's probably not the best option. Again, you know, chocolate before dinner and then try to go to bed. It's probably not the right thing to do. Um, and so, so again, it's just recognizing that these individuals are really there to talk you through it, to help you help you learn more about yourself, help you find better solutions and, and habits that may not be optimal and that may be keeping you from reaching, um, you know, your goals, whether it's on the scale, in the gym, how your pants fit, or just mentally being able to survive the day. <laughs> so, and that's, uh, that's all yeah, we want to do. <laughs> yes. But, um, you know, I thought this was important because someone had asked me, you know, just recently, hey, what's the difference? Like, are you wellness coaching? Like, because again, I say, you know, I don't always say I'm a personal trainer. I say I'm more of a manual therapist because that's what I am. However, I do training. I also guide people through their journey. And they're like, well, what does that mean? You know, are you a wellness coach? And I was like, well, this is what a wellness coach is. This is what a personal trainer is. And they're like, oh, I never really knew there was a difference, but now that makes sense. And so I think sometimes if one person has the question, there's probably many people. Yes. Um, well, Wendy, uh, for this episode, I, I definitely learned a lot from you. And it's good to know that we share the same situations, you know, running around, picking up, dropping off yeah. this game, that game. <laughs> and it's like, take a breath, four seconds in, hold, four <laughs> seconds out, hold. And yeah, so I know we're not alone. So just for you guys. You're not alone. Yeah, you're, not not, alone. you're not alone. So if you're listening to us here on Random Fit, just know for one, you're not alone. But also know that we appreciate you for listening. If there's anything more that you want to see, listen to us talk about, like, follow, subscribe, download, share, but more importantly, comment, let us know. And you know, we can't give you what you want if we don't know what you want. So until next time, Take care and be well.